Hello and welcome to the third video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering some C-sharp programming which will allow our player to move. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. And you can also find all the scripts and assets that we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So, programming. Something a lot of people do worry about when it comes to game development. What are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to use C-sharp to make our player object here move. It's fairly simple, but some things may look a little bit confusing at first. So, how do we create a script? Well, let's go to our Assets window and right click, Create, Folder, and we'll call this Scripts. Remember what I said last time about keeping everything neat and tidy? I have a base folder for pretty much everything. So within here, what we're going to do is create a C-sharp script called Player Movement. So right click, Create, and just under Folder at the top, you have C-sharp script. So let's click that. And we can name this anything we want. It is entirely up to you, but please try and keep it relevant to what the script is actually going to do. So in this case, Player Movement. Now, once we create this script and open it in Visual Studio, it does effectively mean that we're creating the base script in this tutorial, but it doesn't mean that that is the final script. It could simply mean that we could build it for now and advance it further and further uh, with each passing tutorial. And that is exactly what we are going to do. So once it opens up in Visual Studio, yours may look a little different than mine. I guess it just depends what version you use, but fundamentally everything is going to be the same. Uh, I don't need to sign in right now. So what do we do with all of this? Well, I know that this can look a little bit daunting, but let's go through a couple of things to try and understand what they are. Up here is namespace, and what these are are a way for the script to recognize the information it's going to be pulling from. So for example, we're using the Unity engine, so it needs this script needs to know that we're using that engine so things make sense to it. Think of it as a library in the sense that this script needs to know some information, so it goes to the library, it pulls out a book, has a look, and it knows what it's doing. Down here we have a public class, player movement, mono behavior. So this public class name should always match your actual script name. So in this case, you can see, because it's a new script, by default it has named it player movement, which is the same. If you were to change the name of it, it wouldn't work so well. It would throw up an error, and you'd see that in the console. Down here we have something called methods. We have void start and void update. What are these? So void start is a method which means it runs whatever code is inside these curly brackets once as soon as the script is activated. So if we were to attach this script to our scene, play our scene, it would start instantly, but it would only run once. Void update, on the other hand, would run every single frame. And what I've just said is in this green writing here. And what is this? Well, these are little annotations that you can create. This isn't a line of code. It is just a nice, simple way for you to see what something means. So we could change this to absolutely anything. And it wouldn't really make a difference at all. But you can see that we have changed this line here. So how do we create a script which allows our player to move? Well, what we need to do is we need to transform the position of our player. And this script will be attached to our player itself. So that means that whatever object that this script is attached to will perform the functions that we create in this script. So what are we going to do? Well, let's get rid of void start because we don't need it. Let's get rid of the annotations because we don't need them. So we can highlight them and press delete. What we do need is a variable. What's a variable? It is some information in a script that you can control. For example, we are going to have the player speed as a variable. And what that means is that we can then 
increase our player speed or decrease if we wish. It just means that we have an easy, accessible way of changing information in the script without having to look through line by line. And that will become apparent as we go through. So how do we declare a variable? And what variable are we going to use? So speed is going to be a number. And numbers come in two different things. They can either be an integer or a decimal. And in this sense, a decimal is known as a float. And because we want our speed to increase gradually as we play through the game, to make it harder and harder, you know, to get further and further, we need it to be a decimal rather than an integer. But for now, we'll start with an integer. So let's have public. And the reason we want this uh, variable to be public is because we want to be able to see this value in our inspector panel. And you'll see that as we get further into this specific tutorial. So now we need to declare the type of variable. It's going to be a float. And what are we going to call this variable? Let's call it player speed. Now we could theoretically end this right here and say, well, we've declared our variable, but what if we want to actually set a value for the script? Well, we can put equals two and then end it with a semicolon. So what this line is essentially saying is we have a variable. We want to be able to see the variable. Uh, the variable is going to be an integer, but it can also be, a, 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 sorry, it's going to be a, a decimal, but it can also be an integer, which means that, yeah, it can be two, but it will be read as 2.0 in uh, the script's mind. Uh, and we want to call it player speed, and we want to set it as a value of two. So that means that, Excellent. Next thing we need to do is we need to put in our void update method a way of using that variable to move our object. So what we can do is we can put transform dot translate. Now at this point you'll notice that transform is all lowercase and translate has an uppercase T. Capitalization is vital in programming. If you don't get your capitalization correct, you will have errors or the wrong effect will happen because transform with a capital T and transform with a lowercase t are technically two separate things. So just make sure you get it right. Uh, the way we, we know it's transform is because we want to transform the position of our particular object. So to do that, once we have translate, we open bracket and we say what we want to do with it. In this case, we want to move it forward so we can use it on a vector three and a vector three is a way of saying well it's three dimensions so we can have it go forward backward side side it's, think of it as it's in the 3d world so what we'll say is vector three dot forward and what that will do is it will push our character forward our player it will go forward with this script However, just having that as it is, is not sufficient. You can already see that it is predicting what we're going to put next. You can see it says tab to accept. It thinks we're going to multiply it by player speed. And for now, yeah, okay, we'll do that. So let's press tab to accept what it thinks. Uh, let's now save this script. We are gonna do more to this script, so don't worry too much right now. Uh, and let's head back into Unity. And this script now needs to be attached to our player. So we can drag and drop that script onto our player right there. And if we click on player, you'll see that that script down the bottom has now been added as a component. So that's something I didn't mention in the other tutorial, that a component can also be a script. In this case, it is. And you can see that variable right there of two. So when we set it as public, it gives us the opportunity to view it in the inspector panel and we can change it on the fly in our game. So if we want to test different things, we can do it that way. So if we now press the play button and let's see what effect we get. Give it a second. And if you saw right there, you should have seen it zoom past on the screen. So let's do that again and see if we can see it zoom past on the screen. There we go. It goes flying that way. 
And if we go into our scene view while it's still playing and double click on player, we can never catch up with it because it's going way too fast. There we go. So now we've stopped the game, we can see it quite clearly. Now we could theoretically change the value of our player speed, but that's not the best way to do things. We need to make this player move in terms of the game uh, speed and the world around it. So how do we incorporate that into the script? Well, if we head back into Visual Studio, and you'll see here that we are moving it based on going forward at the player speed. Well, we need to make that player speed relative to the world around it and the game speed. So to do that, we need to add in a couple of things here. So after vector3.forward multiplied by player speed, we need to put before the player speed time dot delta time and then multiply that by the player speed. And what that means is that you can think of the delta as the game speed. So it will move relative to the game speed, but we also need to make it relative to the world around it. So after player speed, we need to put a comma and put space dot world. And you can see the hints it does come up with. You can see space relative to. So we need to make it relative to the world around it. And now once we do that and resave our script and head back into Unity, give it a second just to have a little think there. You can see it thinking. Um, it means that the script is completely updated within Unity, and it does mean that we don't need to reattach the script to our player object because it will already be dated on the player. So now if we press play, we should see movement, but at a much more understandable rate. Let's see if we can go to scene. There we go. So we can see right there, it's moving that way. So if we went to game view, we could see it. Excellent. So what does that mean exactly? Why is it going that way? Well, it sees that as forward. So we need to make sure our player now understands that forward is that way and not that way. And how do we do that? Real simple. We can change the Y setting. So let's change that to 270 to make our player go that way. So if we press play now, we should be able to see our player go the correct direction in our game. Hoping any moment now our camera should pick it up. There we go. He's still going off that way. Okay, well, let's change that because clearly he's not happy with whichever way he's going. But in all honesty, I don't think we should really be building on the um, on the, this direction. I think we should probably be building that direction because now I look at it, if we change that to uh, 90, in fact, let's do something different. Let's actually select this the correct way. So instead of 50, the Z axis should be 50 and the X should be 20. Now, theoretically, you can do different things with how the player functions. So it's not really a game changer, but we've discovered different things early on, which means we can modify, adapt swiftly. So if you look, we now have these right here. Our player looks like he's going to go perfectly well this way. So if we press play, our camera view will have changed because we've moved our scene around, but we should be able to see our player go in the correct way. So if we go back to our game view any second now, there we go. There is our player just going off and doing its own thing. So this script that we have created, I will leave a link in the pinned comment and in the description for you to go and download this script for free if you want it. And next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to carry on with our C Sharp programming and we're going to code the ability to actually move our player from side to side. Because right now, although things move in the scene, we don't have control. And this is a game and we want control of our player. So that's what we're going to do next time. Remember to subscribe and click the bell icon to stay up to date with the next tutorial and every other tutorial. And I'll see you next time.